take the wind out of their sails. What I do in that, let me give an example. When I try a case and there's something bad about my case, I tell the jury that. I once, rep my first DUI trial that I handled, my guy drove a beer truck for a living, blew a .28 blood alcohol level, and wrecked into two cars. The first thing I told the jury was, ladies and gentlemen, my client blew a .28, wrecked into two cars, and drives a beer truck for a living. They went, oh, I got it out of the way. In negotiations, if there's something that you can't hide, get it out of the way. We fear the unknown, do we not? Oh my gosh, we fear the unknown. That sometimes enters into negotiations. A bird in hand is better than two in the bush. I know it's a cliche. You know why it's a cliche? Because it's true. Sometimes you make the deal or take the deal because it's better to have the money. For example, there's I look at a client sometimes. They want 100 grand. I can only get them 50. I can say, well, here's the deal. We can try to get you 100. It's going to be a two-year wait to go to trial. Or you get 50 now, done. Most are smart and take the 50. Your foe today may be your friend tomorrow and vice versa. Anybody seen the latest movie, Wall Street? Money Never Sleeps? Nobody? I know you guys are broke, college students. <laughs> um, there's a great scene in the movie where uh, one of Gordon Gecko's enemies becomes his ally. Boy, this is true in politics. I was big time in politics back when I was in my early 20s. And it always cracked me up. One minute you're throwing stones at somebody. The next campaign you're on the same team. Hey, I remember we threw those stones at you. Yeah, I remember, you son of a gun. You never know. Don't let them see you sweat. That is very, very difficult at times because sometimes you're sweat. What's most important? When you're in negotiation, what is most important? Get your foot in the door. Make you money. By the way, this isn't up on my list, and it should be. You know sometimes the best move in negotiations is to don't do the deal. There's always another deal. Sometimes it's best not to do the deal. What can you live without? Don't put that in the deal. Patience can be a virtue or a curse. Sometimes you need to be patient. Sometimes... I, this is, let me tell you something. You have to know your own weakness. This is funny. Mediations are becoming more and more popular in the practice of law. That's when you get in a courtroom, uh, not the courtroom, but you get in a room, both sides, and you negotiate with a mediator. I never go to mediations. Do you know why? I have a temper. I get mad, I cuss and leave. So I don't go to them. I send Diane Brown from my office. You know why? She's as patient as Job. She puts up with all the crap, and she stays there all day long. Here I am. I can't stand to be in a room all day long going back and forth. I'm like, just give me your best number, and I'll let you know if it's good or not. That's my weakness. I'm impatient, and I hate all the stupid procedures. But since I know that's my weakness, I don't go to them. I send somebody else that doesn't mind sitting there all day. <laughs> One of the time, I, did, I left a mediation deal with an insurance company in a law office. Steve Wolenzak likes telling the story. And I walked out of his office, and the insurance adjuster was upstairs in the other room. And I walked out of the conference room, and I walked out of the conference room, and I yelled at the top of my lungs. This guy's name's Ed Knox. He's the senior adjuster of my Ed, you can kiss my... <laughs> and walked out. I couldn't stand it. Guess what? The case ended up settling. Let me tell you something about that, though. My temper, I use it. It's very effective at times. Very effective. Sometimes it's effective to get mad and leave a room. Another thing about this, about being a patient, is it really is true sometimes you need to make a decision now. My dad says you can't teach judgment, and I agree with him. You know, this is contradictory. Sometimes you need to be patient. Sometimes you need to make a quick decision. My final Negotiation tip, sometimes you just beg. We've all done that with parents, haven't we? Dad, come on. Mom, come on. Spouse, girlfriend, come on. Negotiations in business, I swear to gosh. Let's say you got a good relationship. Okay, let's say, for example, I use Presto, for example, Presto and Snappy Tomato. Let's say, for example, we were thinking about getting another bid on where we're going to get our sauce from. Well, I could hear the guy from press. come on, Vito. V How do you like that? Our guy, our, one of the guys that runs our pizza company is named Vito. 
How do you make that up? The guy's name's Vito. People wonder why they always think pizza's a front for the mob. Anyway, you know, I could see them begging. Come on, man, please. We've been doing business together forever. Don't, come on. And sometimes that works. Vito says, all right, I'll give you another chance. By the way, this is a good technique. I've used it even with federal judges. I have stood in front of judges. I've stood in front of juries. I've stood, I've, I've been in, uh, arguing a case in a judge's chambers. And I will say those words. Your Honor, I'm not too uh, big to beg. I'm begging you. You cannot dismiss that part of our case. I'll look at a jury and say, ladies and gentlemen, I beg of you. You cannot find my client guilty of da 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 It's a technique. And don't be afraid to use it. A lot of it depends on who you do it. This is a funny story. I own Bulldogs, which loses money. I publicly say it on the radio. I got two restaurants that lose money. Um, the other day on the radio, I publicly said, if anybody wants it, I will give you the business. Um, I fire employees all the time. At Bulldogs, I'm telling you, it drives you nuts. Some of the people and the things they do, and see, I'm all about responsible discipline. I would say almost every person I fired, I rehired. <laughs> I'd get mad and fire them because they did something bonehead. And words traveled through the Bulldogs. They said, hey, man, don't worry. He fired me, too. Just wait a day. You call him and apologize. He's a softy. He'll take you back. You know what? It works. Because I, I am, though, though I have this persona of being the bulldog and tough guy, I am a softy. I cry in movies. So this works on me. Reverse psychology works on certain people. You know, it works on my dad. My dad's biggest, he's 80 years old. He's a very successful person, still works every day. Um, his biggest love is horses. I hope one day he gets a horse in there. He had a horse in the Breeders' Cup. He had a horse that won a million bucks and ran the Breeders' Cup and broke its leg in the Breeders' Cup. When you talk to my dad about horses, he gets, I mean, this is part of the negotiation, he gets excited. When I got to talk to my dad about something important, I do this all the time. I'll say, Dad, how's the horses? Oh, we just sold, da 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 I get him talking about his horses. Then I ask him what I want. It works like a charm. Reverse psychology works, too, on my dad. If I say to my dad, see, I know, I know him. Now, this, apply this to business. No, if I say to my dad, you know, I was going to talk to you about such and such, but I know you wouldn't like it. Well, don't say.